Hey guys, Shanti Phillips here. We're gonna bring you a DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today and these new glasses, which you know had the better ones, they got lost at the fair. If you saw the fair video, I don't know where they went. So now I have to buy just cheap dollar store ones because I keep losing them all the time. But anyway though guys, we're gonna bring you a DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Today in this video too, I'm gonna have a cool unboxing at the end of this video, which has to do with the film Brothers Grimsby, you know, the Sasha Vera Cohen movie that comes out on Blu-ray and DVD today. Also gonna have a couple different DVD and Blu-ray reviews at the end of this video as well. Also, I just want to let you guys know this weekend I'm going to be at the VidCon convention. I've never been to that convention in my life, so I really don't know what to expect there. I, I don't really know too much about it at all. I kind of know it's like got panels and people do meetups and stuff like that there. So if any of you guys are going to be there at that convention, let me know and uh, definitely be on the lookout for me and say hello if you see me there. But like I said, I'm going to be there this um, Friday and this Saturday at VidCon in Anaheim. Like I said, don't know much about it at all. So we'll see what kind of videos I get there. So anyway though, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. Well, the big thing that came out today was my Big Fat Greek Wedding too, and I actually really like this one a lot. I'm gonna have a review of this one at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. And then the other thing that came out today, like I said, was the Brothers Grimsby, and I'm gonna have the unboxing that has to do with this one today, but really thought this was a fun movie with uh, Sasha Vera Cohen and Mark Strong, like a spy kind of spoof film. And then the other one today was Night of Cups, and I actually thought this was interesting, a Terrence Malick film and also Midnight Special, so I'm going to have a review of that at the end of this video as well. Into the Valley View's thrift store we go. So we'll take a look in here and see if we can find anything different today. You know, I come in here usually like once every month or so to see if they change anything out. And sometimes I find some decent out of print stuff in here. Other times it ends up being a lot of the same stuff for a long time or really, really common stuff. So it's like a mixed bag in here. Like sometimes, like I said, it's just a lot of super common things. It's funny, you always see kids in a lot of like thrift stores and stuff. It's just like kind of an odd, obscure thing to come across a lot. But it's like, I think it has like a slight value to it, but it's one I have and I, I say I come across it quite a bit or we'll just keep looking through here and see if there's anything in here different today but like I said it seems like today a lot of the same stuff and a lot of real common stuff but you never know yeah, well, there was a bunch of nothing in there today, a bunch of real common stuff. Looked through it, took you know, a while to go through it, and didn't see anything at all today. Like I said, sometimes you go in there, you can find some really decent stuff, some really good out-of-print stuff. Other times, it's like super common stuff, and today, it was super common. Into the goodwill we go. Well, we're taking a look in here and see there's anything different in here today. It's funny, they have a lot of UK releases in here today, like UK Disney titles I've seen in here. But, you know, I haven't been in this location in a really long time. You know, we'll see if they got anything new in here. And thing with Goodwill is I know they check their stuff, so every so often something slips through the crack, but I know they eBay every title, you know, like they check prices, so you very rarely find a lot of out-of-print things in here. I saw this in here, and, you know, it's really sad about Anton Yelchin. Like, I was a huge fan of him, and this is a great movie, though. In my video on this weekend, I'm reviewing the green room, you know, on Blu-ray. But I, it's just so sad about him because, like I said, what happened and everything. Because he was definitely one of my top favorite actors, like of all time, like especially too currently. I've always followed him, and it's just really sad about the whole thing. But we'll keep looking in here though and see if there's anything else in here differently. But like I said, they always scan all the titles, so they usually know if something's out of print or not in here. And one of the other, here's one of the other ones I saw, another UK one. It's funny, they've got a lot of these UK titles in here. And another one, a UK release of like Taxi or something. I guess is that the Queen Latifah movie? No, it's like a different movie called Taxi. Maybe it's a TV show or something like that. I don't know what this is. I've never, never seen that one in my life. But we'll just keep looking around in here. And over here they have Dahmer. I was thinking too, like, you know, this is from like 2002. I was remembering like around this time they made so many serial killer movies like I think Gacy and a number of other ones, Ed Gein. It was like the big thing around like 2000 to 2003, make lots of serial killer movies. And I don't know if it was the same company producing them or what. It was just sort of like the big thing then. And there hasn't been like a string of those kind of movies in a really long time. I was thinking about that recently. Into Walmart we go. Yeah, like I said in Target, the main thing that came out today was Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 and Midnight Special. Another one that came out today, too, was The Wave, which is like a natural disaster, kind of like Deep Rising, I think, kind of movie, I think. Like like a, some kind of giant wave, and it looks kind of interesting. I think it's like a Norwegian film or something like that. I'm not totally sure where it's from, but cool, like, lenticular cover on this that changes like that. That's actually a really cool cover on this for the DVD of this. 
I think this one might have been today, Doggy Daycare, the movie. I think this one, I always, I always kind of like these kind of weird dog movies. I feel like I've watched so many dog movies over my life. Ever since like one of the early ones I always remember was Bingo. Which, you know, hopefully one day that comes to Blu-ray. But other than that over here, it looks like a lot of the same stuff from the last couple weeks, like The Dark and Dead 7 and this one. Now, I, I know now it's called, this is Independence Day, not Independence Day. It's Independence Day. Like, I was, you know, very dyslexic, so I was mixing these up the other time. People were all going, why are you mixing it up like that? When you have dyslexia and stuff like that, you tend to not notice something like that until later, and then you watch it back, or someone says something, you're like, oh, why was I saying that? I saw this one was coming out. This like Ghostbusters. It's like I think this is the yeah. It's, I don't know what this is. This is like some kind of a new Ghostbusters. The original animated series are back and ready for action. So it's like this original one that was you know like Let's Go Ghostbusters. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. And it's like that one, but like done in like a modern CGI kind of animated thing. If anybody's watched this, let me know. Like. I feel like I don't I don't know, it's just kind of odd that they brought this show back and it's like, who would have ever thought this would come back? It's kind of interesting though, I had no idea, because I originally thought it was like, oh, they put this kind of cover on the original one, the original Ghostbusters one of this, the Let's Go Ghostbusters, but it's not that, it's like a brand new CGI animated thing. Into Best Buy we go. Yeah, one of the other things that came out today was, you know, Workaholics. And this is like the complete sixth season of this one. This one's only on DVD. I'm going to talk about that one at the end of this video as well. But other than that, anything different over here. I don't even see the one that I showed in Walmart with the case, the Wave. I don't see the Blu-ray of that one in here. Like I said, if you guys have watched that one, let me know how the wave is. Because it sounded like it could be kind of interesting, though. But I don't know a whole ton about it. But other than that, though, it doesn't seem to be too much in here. Like I showed everywhere else, you know, the Brothers Grimsby and uh, Big Fat Greek Wedding. But not a huge release week, week of a lot of new other things. It's just interesting, though, that they don't... At least I don't see the wave anywhere in here. I guess they didn't carry that one. And I heard something online, too, that they're going to be, like, uh, decreasing the size of the aisles to, like, only two DVD and Blu-ray aisles. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I've seen people posting online about they're going to make it even smaller as it is and less stuff in here. Yeah, one thing I want to show too, which is pretty cool, I saw people showing this, they actually carry an error release in here of, you know, Bride of Reanimator. So that's pretty cool. They're starting to stock error release titles, you know, error video US titles in here. This is the first one I've seen so far though. So that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday show I'm bearing today. Like I said, I'm going to be at VidCon this Friday and Saturday, so be on the lookout for me if any of you guys are there. You know, comment below too if any of you guys are going to be there. Anyway though, now stay tuned for the Brothers Grimsby unboxing and some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. So now I'm going to take a look at this gigantic mystery box, which, you know, I know has something to do with the movie The Brothers Grimsby, which I talked about, you know, in my last videos, which came out today. So I take a look inside this. I have not seen what this is, so I don't know for sure what it is. I have to try and get it open. If it was in a bigger box, it was like a box inside of another box. Of course, I took it out of that other box. Let's see what's in here now. So in here, there is a another box inside of here that says, Live Animals, Warning, Not Safe for Work, NSW. So let's see, let's see if I can get the box out of the box. So here's, try not to knock anything over. Alright, so now let's take a look and see what's inside of the box. It says heavy. There's a thing on there that says heavy on there. And it says live animals, not safe for work. Another thing on the back of there says this side up. So let's see what's inside of it. Alright, so we're gonna open up the box. And inside of it, as you can take a look, inside of it is a bunch of, you know, Excelsior and a giant elephant. Like elephant kind of pinata thing. Every time I think of this stuff though. I think of, you know, in the bad seed, you know, when I, the ones like uh, guys sleeping on the bed of a Excelsior, like, I don't know, and she lights on a fire. I always think of this. <laughs> I, think, I don't know if I've actually ever seen Excelsior in real life, but Excelsior is in this box. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but they were calling it the bad seed, the movie. So let's see what's inside. It has a thing back here that says, do not enter the elephant. Like, if you've seen the Brothers Grimsby, you know this elephant has something to do with the movie. All right, so inside of that... Is a Brothers Grimsby thing, you know, like a beer kind of coaster kind of thing, you know, uh, co cozy, I think is what it is, you know, they keep the beer, beer cold. Uh, the other thing in here is a Brothers Grimsby kind of like, it's like a tablet thing. I don't know what this is. It's like a little like dog tag kind of thing. It's 
something like, like I don't know what this is. If this is a flat, I don't know what I don't know what that is. Like a kind of like a plastic thing. I guess you wear it around or something, something like that. I think that's. I don't know what for sure what that is. I think it's just like a little tag kind of thing. The other thing in here is some Brothers Grimsby like coasters. Sort of like, I think that's what these are, like, you know, like drink kind of coasters and stuff like that. Of like the elephant's bots, see, like the elephant's bots. That's kind of funny, like coaster things. The other thing inside of here is some elephant underpants. Like, so you have the elephant trunk and you, you get the idea of what it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of funny. And the other thing in here is... A, gosh, like a glass, Brothers Grimsby glass. Like a yeah, glass thing for the movie. And the last, I think the last thing, I think that was everything in. No, there's this. Is this something else too? Like a vomit bag, I think? Yeah, yeah, a barf bag like they give you like on the plane. So, like if you get like, gro I'm pretty sure that's what, yeah, like a barf bag. So if you get like grossed out by something in the movie. That's pretty funny though. It's a very funny thing. Like I said, you get everything out of the elephant's you know, backside. Well, that was a look inside of what was inside the mystery box that has to do with Brothers Grimsby. And now to a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. The first one I got from Universal is My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2, which is the follow-up to My Big Fat Greek Wedding, which I think came out in 2002. If you guys don't remember, that movie was basically about a woman whose family is really up on her about getting married, and they're kind of saying, you need to get married to a Greek guy, and they keep on, like, berating her, you've got to do this. And, of course, she finally finds somebody that she likes, and he's not Greek, and it's kind of this whole to-do. And this is, you know, years later... They're both married now, and kind of the spark in the relationship has kind of faded a little bit. They're kind of getting set in their ways. They're slightly giving up a little bit. They're also dealing with a lot of stress going on because their daughter is getting ready to uh, graduate from high school, and she's like, you know, signing up for colleges and things like that, and she really wants to go to college out of state to kind of get away from this family because her, you know, the, the, mo the mother's parents, you know, her grandparents are kind of saying, you need to marry a Greek guy, you know, guy, and they're doing the same kind of stuff they did to her and, you know, giving her all kinds of crap about this and saying oh if you get her married to a Greek guy or she gets a Greek boyfriend she's not going to leave so it's a whole big to do at the same time you know her grandparents are you know he's like looking into like his genealogy and his like past and stuff like that and he ends up finding their you know wedding certificate and finding out that it was never signed by the priest so then it becomes this huge to do thing you know with her you know her fa her parents you know dealing with you know, they're not really married, and I love the old guy, the old actor who was in this, who was from, you know, Thinner, and he was from the original one as well as the grand, as her father, but I always loved that actor, and there were some really, like, sad performance scenes with him, which were really good, and I even, you know, teared up quite a bit in some of these scenes in this movie. I really liked this. I just thought it was a, a fun movie. It was like, you know, it was similar to the first movie, but also had a lot more, too, going on about them trying to plan the wedding for her parents, you know, because since they you know, were never really officially married, they're trying to plan this huge spectacle wedding, and, you know, also do with their daughter and what she gonna what she's gonna do and it has on here though a gag reel which is a pretty funny deleted you know uh gag reel and stuff on this one but i would definitely recommend checking this out especially if you like the first movie the next one from warner brothers is one i didn't get to see this in theaters called uh midnight special the director of this i think he did um take shelter and mud i'm pretty sure this has you know michael shannon in this one and you know kristen dunce and adam driver it's basically though it's one of those movies when you're kind of watching it, you're trying like to figure out exactly what's going on with the characters and like what everything means because at the beginning of the movie you see Michael Shannon kind of taking his son and kind of like on the run. He's on the run with this other guy in the car and you're kind of trying to figure out what is going on and where he's leaving from. You start to learn more and more about him and the character and what is going on because this kid has got these kind of weird powers like his eyes light up and you know anyone that's around him is kind of like drawn to this kid and trying to you know it's kind of like he even you know in the beginning of the movie though he escapes from this kind of cult like setting where they're kind of like worshiping this kid and they're also like keep on talking about this certain date when certain thing is something going to happen on this date that involves this kid and Michael Shannon is kind of on the run with the kid and then Adam Driver is kind of going to this cult kind of talking to them but you know because that's where the kid was taken from trying to figure out exactly what there is about this kid and 
and that's pretty much what it is. It's like kind of like this kind of road movie with Michael Shannon taking this kid and trying to figure out how to get him away. And at the same time, too, there's like this pending date you keep hearing about trying to figure out what is going on with all this. I thought it was actually a pretty interesting movie. It's definitely a different movie for the director because it's more of a science fiction, like lower budget, but science fiction kind of vibe film because, you know, Mud was way more of like a character piece. And this still is a character piece as well. Has on here, though, um, some featurettes on the film as well. But it actually, like I said, a pretty interesting sci-fi movie. Uh, the next one from um, uh, Comedy Central and Paramount is Workaholic Season 6. This one, I believe, is only released on DVD this specific season of the show. I always really like the show. I think it's a really fun show. And you guys don't know the show. It's basically, though, about these guys who work in an office. Kind of has sort of an office space kind of vibe, and they're kind of always screwing around at work and kind of like the misadventures and things like that, that they get into. This one had a pretty funny episode, though, with them going to this, like, um, Drugs Anonymous meeting because they end up getting arrested for some kind of drug thing going on, like, with, with for marijuana and, and have to take this class. And the one guy in there is talking about, like, one to do a documentary that they meet so um adam devine's character wants to act like he's addicted to crack and things like that so he wants to film him for a documentary and andy dick though is in this one as well playing someone who comes to the meeting i don't know I, this is just a really really fun show it has on here bloopers deleted scenes and a drunkumentary you know commentary on all the episodes of this but a really fun show and i think there's only from what i've heard i don't know for certain though there's only gonna be one more season of this show uh, the next one from um, MGM, which is like this one, like a, and Fox, like a Burn on Demand release, a movie called Year of the Comet, which is one I had never heard of before. The one actor in this one was from Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde, was like one of my favorite weird like movies. It's like real out of print and hard to get. But this is basically about this. Um, this woman who works for her father and her and her family's kind of giving her all kinds of problems and not really respecting her and they send her out I think it was like to France I can't remember exactly where it was she sent in the middle of the countryside to, to find this bottle like curate this like bottle of wine when she goes out there but she ends up actually discovering this really rare bottle of wine which is like it was like kind of made during the time of this comet that the like comet that was in the sky and it's kind of like she goes there to get it but at the same time there's these um criminals in the house that are like holding the owner or someone in their hostage i was trying to figure out exactly what's going on but they're holding him kind of like hostage to try and find some certain like formula things that they need it turns out the formula they need is actually on the bottle on the box of this of this bottle you know that the wine that she finds is in so it's kind of her and the one guy from you know dr dragon mrs Hyde kind of going on this kind of like um indiana jones sort of kind of sort of vibe like through the jungle and kind of track of them kind of going after her and going through kind of weird encounters and stuff to try and get away from them it's a kind of a fun one like i said it was one i had never heard of before i'd never seen and it's called year of the comet and the next one um from the orchard orchard company is what we called i survived a zombie holocaust this is a movie, it was from, from from New Zealand, and it's basically about these people making this film, this zombie movie, and they're kind of having all kinds of problems out there, and a guy who comes in to be the new intern on set to kind of work on his first movie, and he's kind of has a script with him, and he's trying to say to everybody, oh, would any of you like to read my script, and he's kind of bothering everybody about it, and like, this movie's having all kinds of issues, they're having issues with the actors, and something starts happening in, in, in the, because they're shooting this kind of small little village area, and people start getting sick, the one actor gets sick and they start noticing like when he takes the one guy back to his hotel like there's like zombie like kind of people there and people are really odd acting and of course you know they're making a zombie movie but then there actually ends up being a real zombie outbreak while they're making this movie so there's some funny stuff too of like the real zombies coming and like killing the actors and the director is so oblivious he thinks it's the zombie actors just like attacking him and he doesn't even pay attention and realize that it really is real zombies and they're all getting killed and they it's basically them trying to survive and figure out what they're going to do why this happens why they're making a movie it's pretty fun movie movie though like I said you know all about me I always like movies too about making movies this one this movie's had a couple different titles but I really want to see this one you know Tom Arnold's in this movie Simon Rex um one actress that I work with on um you know Ghost Quake Daniel Greenup is in this movie so I was really interested in seeing this one and I think it had a couple other titles like Student Bodies which was not a remake of that one but and I think another title too but this one the title that it got released as is Beginner's Guide to Sex and this was actually it kind of has the vibe of that movie Sex Ed with Haley Joe Osment a little bit but I actually think this was made before that I think 
Blank. And I actually really thought this was a pretty funny movie. It has that kind of weird humor, like almost like humor where it's like set in an alternate reality where people are doing really dumb, odd things. Like the kids in this movie, they have this like thing called a jump club and they're like jumping off the balcony of their of the school building. And it's like jumping off high levels. It's like really ridiculous. And they're all going, oh yeah, I'm going to jump off of that. It's just absolutely absurd. It's like, I like that kind of otherworldly, you know, alternate re you know, universe where people are really stupid doing weird things. And this has that kind of thing. But it's basically this this woman who gets a job as a sex ed teacher. Tom Arnold ends up hiring her. And she doesn't really, never even really went to school for education or anything. But he always liked her when she was a, a student there. So he's like, oh, I hired her. And, he, and she, of course, this girl knows nothing about sex ed. She's very prudish, has never had sex. So she doesn't really know anything about what she's teaching. It's kind of her teaching these kids and, and dealing with not really knowing anything and kind of trying too hard and like taking advice from her sister to act certain ways and all these kind of odd things that are going on and like weird things that are going on with the students there like I said dealing with that jump club and like the weird stuff Tom Arnold is doing in this with the other guy I just thought this was a really fun movie and Simon Rex plays the librarian that the woman who gets a job there starts to like and he's got all these ridiculous stuff that's going on I always like Simon Rex in movies like I don't I think he's always funny and kind of plays it kind of strange and I don't know. I, like I said, I really found this to be a seriously fun, ridiculous movie that has that kind of weird vibe going on where it's like an alternate reality of people just so stupid acting in it. Uh, the next one from um, the Cinelopolis, I think that's how you say it, Cinelopolis, I can never say the name of this company, Cinelopolis, I'll have to put it below, but it's a movie called Belladonna of Sadness, which is an anime film from 1973, so it's like kind of a rare one, and it has, it's basically the, it's a, a, wo a woman who's, you know, with her boyfriend that she's going to get married to, and she ends up getting like, kind of raped and attacked by these people in the town and she kind of goes back to get revenge from a witch on these people but it's like a, a really well like different kind of anime because it's got stuff where it's like stationary pictures and it's like almost like that trippy kind of Beatles yellow submarine anime look mixed with like Fritz the Cat mixed with like LSD kind of trip images from the 60s of all these weird sequences and stuff like that I, I don't know I thought it was a very interesting odd out there anime film which is one I feel like a lot of people haven't seen but like definitely maybe a little like the point too but just like really nice different kind of anime kind of animation on this one and like I said I thought it looked look really good too really good transfer on this one and the last one from um, Monarch Entertainment is a movie called All American Bikini Car Wash and this is basically about this guy who is getting ready to flunk out of school and he's not doing well and he, he has a bunch of roommates staying with him at his place that the parents are paying for for him and like he's like you know he, he's, he's kind of like, like risking get like if the parents are saying if you end up flunking out of school we're going to stop paying for you where you're staying and you're gonna be out in the street so it's a huge to do about with this going on he doesn't know what he's gonna do and his professor has this kind of car wash that he has and he's like well if you run this car wash for me I'll guarantee that you're pass and I'll give you a passing grade but he doesn't know he, he knows that it's not gonna work and he needs to get this money so he ends up having this idea of kind of having bikini girls at the car wash and like they start working there and it's set in Vegas so there's the scenes like on the Vegas strip and it's kind of funny like you have to like blur up people's faces a couple of faces in the background because you know they they were just probably filming it not without permission. So it was kind of interesting. Like you see a couple faces blurred out in the background, but it's basically, that's what it is pretty much. It's just like these girls working at the car wash. It definitely felt to me like almost like a 1990s kind of movie or something like that. Like a movie, like you haven't seen this kind of movie in a long time. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this, uh, the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.